They say that we, the people of Hebron, are like the ancient olive tree, whose broad, hardy, gnarled trunk has its roots deeply implanted in the soil. Rabbi Mordechai Moti Elon visits the cave of Machpelah in Hebron with the rabbis, educators, and students of the yeshiva that he heads. This momentous reunion of parents and children is of especially powerful significance in Hebron, where our ancestors are buried and their descendants thrive. The eternal resting place of the founders of our people are the foundation of a glorious future for their progeny. The very name of this city, Hebron, is derived from the Hebrew root meaning unity, as in the word haver, friend. Here, everything joins in an integral whole. Generations mingle. Past merges with future. Celestial Jerusalem joins earthly Jerusalem. Present and eternity become one. Some 4,000 years ago, the patriarch Abraham purchases the cave of Machpelah in Hebron. His legacy is reinforced throughout the biblical period by the presence of Isaac and Jacob, Caleb ben Yefune and Othniel ben Kenaz. King David himself reigned in Hebron for seven years. Two millennia ago, King Herod erects the structure that still stands above the cave of Machpelah. The Jewish community of Hebron persists even after the destruction of the temple, remaining continuously through the Mishnaic and Talmudic periods, the Arab conquest era, and the Middle Ages. Maimonides, Nachmanides, and Rabbi Ovadia Mibartanura all spent time in Hebron. The Ari, the Chida, and the author of the Stei Chemed all resided in Hebron. Menucha Rochel, daughter of the Mittler Rebbe of Lubavitch, comes to the Holy Land and establishes her home in Hebron. The deportees of the Spanish Inquisition established the Jewish Quarter and the Avraham Avinu Synagogue. Lubavitcher Hasidim come to Hebron and help institutionalize the diverse Ashkenazi community. The community grows, and by the end of the 19th century, there are many yeshivot, schools, and kindergartens. Financial institutions are established, including a branch of the Anglo-Palestine Bank. The famous Slobodka Yeshiva of Lithuania, with all its rabbis and students, moves permanently to Hebron. Students flock from Europe, America, and all over the land of Israel. The sounds of Torah fill the air of Hebron. With the inception of the British Mandate, a tranquil atmosphere prevails, with Arabs and Jews coexisting peacefully under foreign rule. It seems that the trunk of the olive tree is sturdy and anchored. Then come the riots of summer 1929, and the tree is suddenly severed. The Mufti Amin al Husseini, a Nazi sympathizer, incites toward murder of the Jews. Arabs slaughter Jews throughout the land of Israel, but the pogrom is most brutal in Hebron. Jews are butchered with axes and knives. Women are tortured, raped, and burned to death. Synagogues are destroyed. Yeshivas set ablaze. But the olive tree of Hebron gains strength. New branches grow, heralding return. The Six-Day War, we return to Hebron. No longer restricted to the seventh step, the Jewish people enter the cave of Machpelah. Pesach, 1968, a group of settlers headed by Rabbi Moshe Levinger checks in at the Park Hotel in Hebron and remains there. A few weeks later, they move to the nearby military government complex. 